That's got bigger. Oh, hey, Zach, how much are you wearing now? Those Mate, to be honest, I'm not. Even, I'm the lightest I've ever been. Genuine? Genuine. Oh, you what do you play? 110 kilos I'm right now. <sighs> That's heavy. It's a good weight. I, I was uh, playing the prem about 112, I think, but because the, because here it's weird. It's like it's so behind the times in certain aspects. It's like just run, just, lads, just run. So it's just like all you do is run. Like the preseason, no, I've said it in a couple of articles now. Everyone's like, oh yeah, whatever. It was genuinely the toughest preseason I've ever done. Like the first day was rogue. You rocked up in your own kit, and I was like, "What the heck is going on here?" Because I didn't have the kit then, so I was like, "Oh, I've signed up for summer here." Uh, and then they just ran, and I was like, "I'm actually going to pass out." Because it was like this heat as well, and I was like, "I was done." I was like, "What have I signed up for?" But these Frenchies, no joke, are ridiculously fit. Like everyone thinks, "Oh, we can out, we can outrun them, and we can like the lazy, the big." But nowadays, they're just freaks. Yeah. Um, and I've done some pre at Bath with the likes of Sam O'Neill, but these guys just blow him out the water. Like Fufu, Quadrigo, like that guy's an absolute... And he's 30, 35 or something now, and he just runs for days. Oh, yeah, it's Ed Joe, but now to whisper in your ear, sweet, sweet nothings. So we played oh. um, Cass at home, and I don't know if you were there, Max. Pierre Broncon, remember him? Were you there at that point or not? Yes, yeah, I was, yeah. 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 So this guy, like, I don't know, I think he's Bruce's mate, rocked up and a French dude. And everyone's like, <laughs> everyone's like, who is this guy? Right. <laughs> no one knew what he did. No one knew who he was. And his English was like bare minimum. And I was just like, who is this guy? Um, anyway, lit. then it turned out he was some, everyone knew him in France. He was like the man. Like, he he knew everyone. Everyone's like, Pierre, oh, Pierre Broncon. Like, yeah, who? And he kind of just took charge at Bath of the breakdown of the ball presentation. So he used to run around with a whistle, didn't he? And then blow the whistle and everyone was like, who is this guy? Anyway, later on, he, he got, he jogged on and, and then he ended up being the head coach at Cass. So he's now the director, of, he's the main man at Cass. And him and Eddie are like this. So him and Eddie know each other really well. I don't know how, but they do. And I remember, so he spent a couple of days with them before they played us. And I remember I, wrote, I jogged out to play the get, well, jogged out for the warm up. And at Montpellier, you play, there's a massive screen there. And I look up and I just see Eddie sat there. And I'm like, hang on a minute. So anyway, I, I did a U-turn, U-turn back in the change room, sat down and I was just like, hey, what's going on here? So then I had to get my head right. Anyway, played the game and I expected him just to shoot off after. Um, but he, he's in the bar after, went upstairs. We had a good about 10 minute chat. Um, and it was a good chat. He was just being honest with me and saying that he's, he's really impressed with the decision that I've gone to try and develop myself. And, that he's really impressed with the way I'm playing out here and the way my game's developing. And um, so it was a good little chat. He just said, mate, I'm like, if you're playing well, then I'm going to pick you. And so that's what was said, really. He said, just keep in touch. And so there's the odd message has been exchanged. And after last weekend, we, we touched base again. And um, so it's all positive news, but it's like, for me at the moment, I know that where I am with my rugby, that I'm in France and I don't really have to worry about England and all the folks for so it's a, I'm in quite a good position where I can just know where I am in one place at the moment. Tony would have been trying to work out, wasn't he in Scotland for a bit? I think, I think there was that rumour going around, but I was only there on residency, so I think it was the Scotland, it was the Scotland 18s coach, I won't name and shame him on here, but he said, mate, I can't pick you, so jog on, and then I ended up playing it for England the week later against them, so I won't name and shame him live on stream, but Oh, is that? Do you have to come back? Do you have to sign for English English club though if you want to play for England? Yes. Well, obviously, the, I think there is an exception of a rule out there at the moment because when Surrey's got relegated, yeah, I think they put a rule in place because everyone was worried that they're all going to go and disappear. But obviously, at the moment, I'm yeah. As far as I'm concerned, that I, I have to be in playing in the Premiership and <clears throat> and to, to even get selected for the team. See, oh, with the new salary caps and that, I can see that very quickly getting torn yeah. up. Oh, yeah, I think it's, there's obviously a big discussion at the moment regarding his exit. Pack Lamb came out in an article the other day and said, like, regard to the marquee players, you think it's it should be two rather than one and everything. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think I, I kind of made a good time to um, sit out in France and play on rugby, really. Yeah, two right, man. Yeah, like, just touching back on that, Eddie Jones. This because he actually named he sort of name checked you afterwards in a press conference afterwards right and and then I think he said along the lines of we're hopeful he'll come back and try to fight for a spot 
uh, in the World Cup squad. You, you still got burning ambition to play for England? Oh, massively. I mean, I played twice and I, I loved it, but I think I'm a, a lot better player than I am now than I was then. Um, off mentally as well and, and physically. So I would love the opportunity to get that shirt back on again because I do think I, I can obviously perform better than I did. And, and whether that opportunity arises, then yeah. But for me, it's I love it here. Like I'm showing that in my performances and the lifestyle is amazing and the players and the coach and staff and just a great place to be. And I mean, we're fighting for silverware this year and I could have sat in the premiership and like been comfortable, but I wanted to get out of that zone. Assuming you see out your contract at Montpellier, which club would excite you the most? You know, the way they play their rugby in, in, in the Premiership? It's Glasgow Warriors. Hang on. My, my, <laughs> Ryan, Ryan, Ryan's retiring soon, isn't he? 100%, mate. I've only got, <laughs> I've only got a few months left, in me? Nah, I'm, no, going, I'm, 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 said, I'm going till I'm 40, mate. I'll be, I'll be, <laughs> I'll be around till I'm 40. I'm only 29. No, I think, uh, oh, I mean, it's, it's hard to obviously just start naming team but the premiership is really competitive so to be honest for any, anywhere that will take me because you look at the teams there's a lot of good number eights that, that are out there right now but for me I'm just happy at Montpellier and who knows might decide actually this is the place where I want to want to be for, for the rest of my career Max where do you reckon suits him because I don't know a huge amount about premiership where suits him what, what club would suit him uh Probably Quinns would have to oust Dombran out of there. Exactly. But, That's what I said. There's too many good num- number eights in England. Yeah, yeah Quinns could be a good shout. He wants someone with total rugby. Come come down the Bears way, big fella. Under Big Pat. <laughs> Uncle Pat. Have you heard about their meetings? Oh, yeah, you don't want you don't want to be a bit... Oh, I don't know. Uh, I, I think Quinns could be a good shout. Shift old Don Brandt over to six. Get the big man in at eight. Be nice. That's why I tell you what, that's why meetings are good here in France because you have a bad weekend at the game you have or whatever, or you lose a game or whatever, and it's just French. Shouting swear words. <laughs> I no idea what they're going on. I've got no idea what's going on. <laughs> but I'm just sat there like... like I could be getting abused for all... But I just thought I don't... I, can't, I don't understand it, so I'm quite happy. Like, whereas in England, obviously, if you do something, you're like, whatever. Yeah, well, that's, probably, that's probably like adding to why you're so relaxed out there because you haven't got a clue what's going on. It's just, no, I mean, I don't. I, mean, I get pulled in, like, more, more than sitting in the meetings, the leaders' meetings, and whatever. I'm just sat there, like, yeah, right, there's number eight. That's what I've got to do. That's it. Like, do they have a trans? Do they have a translator, like, when they're speaking in meetings and stuff? Yeah, so Tom Whitford in. translates. Right. Uh, who's our team manager and I tell you so he's pretty he's good a, but a legend of a man Tom a legend he is but he <laughs> I feel sorry for him because obviously the way well, obviously when you do a pre-match speech or whatever there's a lot of like motivation and a lot of like heart behind it and obviously Philippe shouting and swearing at the front <laughs> saying come on and obviously Tom, Tom's trying to keep up he translated so we played Racing we were like we played Racing in, in, in the ridiculous arena and Tom's there <laughs> doing the game Please, like right good up can smash him in the breakdowns. And then Tom Whitford comes out and goes, lads, like straight after him, we've got to tickle him. <laughs> <laughs> and then, all, the English, like, all the English lads turn around and start laughing. So Tom Whitford's oh, like, oh, so no. Felix, Felix's like, we've got to absolutely smash him and whatever. And Tom goes, and we've got to tickle him in the breakdown. <laughs> and all the English lads, like, obviously before the game, like, well, I can't react. Like, okay, yeah. Whatever. And then after the game, oh. he just got absolutely slated. Yeah. Yeah. And some of the translations, not like I, I respect the bro because obviously it's such a difficult thing to do. But some of the stuff he says, he's just like, I'm pretty sure I'm, I don't speak fluent French, but that's not what he said. We have lessons every week, and I oh, going well. Like, oh. I, my accent just doesn't go well with the French. He's like, oh, yeah. the best bit is, it's like we got, so uh, when when we go out for dinner, me and the missus, I try and like speak a little bit French. And it's like, um, I'll have some water, so uh, I bought a Delo, so we play. And they look at you and go, What did you Pardon? say? Say that again? Delo. So, like water. Deco, deco, wait, wait, wait. Yeah. <laughs> so they look at you and go, Pardon? Delo. And they go, Oh, we, oui, Delo. That's like, what yeah, I said. That's exactly what I just said. <laughs> <laughs> 